One great use case of the Intersection Observer API is allowing us to detect the visibility of an element. And there's a whole bunch of cool things we can do with this. We can lazy load images, create infinite scrolling. Well, one common use case I've seen on several sites, like the view documentation, Nux documentation, or even the docs for the Intersection Observer API, is creating a dynamic table of contents. For example, if you look on the right side of this page, as we scroll down, the table of contents will update and show us which section we're currently looking at. And that's what we're going to be implementing today. In just a few minutes, we'll create this great example. So let's break down what's happening from a high level. In this article, we have five different sections, and we can use the intersection observer to detect whenever a new heading crosses a certain threshold. If it is, we want our table of contents to show that as our current section. And also, the table of contents serves as links to each of these headings. This definitely isn't as complicated as it seems, so let's just jump right into it. The first thing we want to do is create our five different headers, and we can do this by saying const headers, then having an array of strings with each one of our sections. Next, let's move on to our template. Our root wrapper element will be main. And then for the left side, we want to say article, create an H1 that says my article. And then for each header in our headers, we want to create a section. So we can say section v4 header comma index in headers. And inside, let's first print out our heading by saying H2, setting our ID to index, and then printing out header inside. And setting our ID here is super important because this is how we can create internal page links to different parts of our article. After our heading, just to make our article feel more real, we'll add a paragraph of lorem ipsum text. Next up, we want to create our sidebar. And we can do this by saying aside. And in here, let's create a div for our table of contents. Since we want each of these to link to the headings, we want to create a bunch of links by once again looping over the headers. And we can set the href to hashtag index. And the last thing to set up is our styles. We want our sections to appear side by side, and we also want our sidebar to be sticky as we scroll down the page. So first, to get them side by side, let's target our main element and set the display to flex. Next, we can target our article and say width 75%, and let's just give it a margin bottom, just so there's some extra room to scroll. Then for our sidebar or the aside, we want to set the width to 25%. Then to style our table of contents, let's target our aside div, set the position to sticky, and let's give it some padding left to space it out from the article a little. And then the last thing we want to do is style each one of our links by setting the display to block, resetting the color, removing the underline, and then giving it a border on the left as well as some padding. And if you look at our app, here's what we have now. As we scroll down the page, the sidebar will stick, and if we click each one of the table of contents, our page will jump to that section. So now that we have our table of contents set up, how do we actually use Intersection Observer to create that nice highlight effect? What we want to do is observe each one of our H2 elements, so the headings of each section, and whenever they cross a certain threshold on our page, we want to update our currently selected section. So let's go up to our script and import ref and on mounted from view. To represent our current section, we can say const current section equals ref, and for now we'll just set it to an empty string. And then inside of onMounted, we can start creating our intersection observers. And we want to do this inside of onMounted so that we have access to the DOM elements of our component. So to create our observer, we can say const observer equals new intersection observer. And inside here, we want to use a callback function that accepts entries, or all of the elements that this intersection observer is observing. Each entry here is an intersection observer entry that describes the intersection between the target element and the root container. So in our case, the viewport. Since this is an array of entries, we can say entries.for each entry to access each one. Next, we want to check a property of this entry called intersection ratio. And this tells us how much of the target element is currently visible within our bounds. So if it's greater than zero, meaning that we're intersecting at all, we want to set current section dot value to entry dot target dot get attribute ID, which is another reason why we needed to set the ID property on our H2 headings. Now that we have our observer set up, let's actually make it observe these headings by saying document dot query selector all getting all of the h2 elements inside of our article and then for each one of these we want to call observer.observe on this section so now if we go to our table of contents and print out current section as we scroll down our page we can see that our current section is updating now all that's left to do is actually style our table of contents depending on which section is selected we can do this by dynamically binding a class by saying colon class 
and adding a class called active if our index equals our current section. Then inside of our styles, we can target this a.active class, set the font weight to bold, and let's also change the border color. Now, if we look at our app and we scroll down the page, we can see that our currently selected section is shown on the right. I highly recommend looking through the different options for the intersection observer, but one I tend to use is changing the root margin so that our current section only changes when the heading crosses something near the top of the screen. We can do that like this, which operates like your typical CSS margin, and this reduces the threshold from checking the entire vertical screen to just this part. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments down below, but I hope you found it interesting and I'll see you in the next one.